Um, glad I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. Almost could go home. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, yeah. toys. Okay. I'm going to call the meeting to order and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. To the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Smuggler. Here. Packard. Here. Smith is absent. Manning. Here. Hammond. Here. Well, there he is. Any conflict of interest declarations? Hearing none, approve of agenda. I'd like to add uh, jail facility discussion okay. or um, new jail facility discussion. I will move to approve the agenda with the addition of the jail uh, discussion, new jail discussion. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, roll call. Hammond. Here. Yes. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mopler. Yes. Motion passes. Approve minutes. Move to approve the minutes. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mopler. Yes. Motion passes. Are there any visitors to be heard? Well, you're actually on the agenda next, so. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Nope, that's fine. So hearing no visitors, Joe, <laughs> there's a years of service dinner for the EMS department. Is that? Step up here, Joe. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Uh, good morning. I'm uh, okay. I'm uh, I work as EMT for uh, Vermilion Fire EMS Department. Uh, July 30th, we're having a uh, celebrating uh, 50 years of service for Vermilion Click County Ambulance. I'm going to have an open house from uh, two to five, and just come here to invite the county commissioners to it. And uh, uh -huh. and uh, if you have any questions, it will actually the Vermilion Click County Act is actually 51 years old. So last year was 50th year, but because of the COVID, we called off. So we were still, but anyway, so uh, and then I'm going to have a current past members have a, a dinner at 6 p.m. and I'll leave you a card and if uh. Have any questions? I just come here to invite you to the, the open house, and if you have any questions about anything else. And what day was that? Again? Pardon me. Oh, July uh, July thirtieth. July thirtieth. Okay, I have a I get a bunch of cards out that way. At uh, mm -hmm. where is it? I'm sorry. It's gonna be the uh, H1 North Dakota the, uh, Fire EMS Station. Oh, yeah. Right. It, uh huh. Thank you. I forgot to say that. Right. Uh huh. But right. It uh. And we're celebrating, you know, like say, the 50th year, and actually it's going to be 51st year. But uh, I might just come here to see if you have any questions or. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? I'd, I'd guess you must be up there pretty close to the top, Joe, uh, as far as years of service. <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> I am the top. That's fine. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Andy, JDC contract removal. Yeah. Okay. The uh, it actually was uh, forwarded to Carrie. Uh, she forwarded out to me and Alexis for review. Um, I'm sure you folks have had a chance to look at it. It's kind of the um, 
you know, if you want to discuss it, or otherwise, if you guys already understand it, but we had, uh, I, I believe what they're doing is just trying to keep the compact counties together. Um, this, this started in 1995, back in 09, we started talking about um, letting other counties into the compact and how we do that, what formula we'd use. Cause in 95, the formula for payment was based on the number of citizens in that county under the age of 19. And uh, that was fixed for the duration of the compact. And uh, of course, Lincoln County went up, others went down and it, and it uh, wasn't quite equitable by the time that the, this thing was sunsetted. Um, it was sunsetted early in, in 2014, the debt was paid, uh, but it was about 2009, I believe, that we started talking about uh, what's next. And, um, and we worked out an agreement that would be based on usage. And, and I looked through the language of this contract and I think it's right in keeping with the intent there that uh, we're looking at a five-year average instead of just annually having these wild fluctuations. Cause you could have, well, we've had years where we've, we've spent a fraction of our budget and other years we've all but doubled our, our budget. So um, you don't want those anomaly years to, to drive that. So it's, uh, if you have a bad year, it's gonna, you're gonna deal with that for five years and then it'll drop off. And we think that's the way to go. Um, I don't know if you picked up in there that it has uh, where if Minnehaha County does contract with a non-compact county like you know, the state or, or any other county that's not in it, that, that, that kid counts as Minnehaha County's kid for the, for the uh, formula. So that's, that seems fair. So as far as the rate is, it, it's all divided out, correct? Okay, what, what you're talking about there, the, the daily rate is something we sign at a different time. This okay. is not the okay. daily rate contract. Okay. This is My this problem. would be in how, we, this is a planning for the future, probably near future, but I, I don't know how far down the road on how we would satisfy the debt okay. if we had a compact. Like we talked about regional jails. This is essentially a regional jail situation, but for juveniles, and we've done it since 1995. It works for juveniles. I don't think it's going to solve our problems for adults because of the, the, the numbers for juveniles where we might have one or zero kids in custody. Obviously, uh, a contract would be the way to go. And, and, it, and it's, it's been the way to go. I, I wouldn't <clears throat> I wouldn't recommend anything different than what we've been doing. And so this this would just be how the formula that we would base the debt obligation on. And since it's a five-year average, we, you know, we can budget for it. And, um, and then of course the daily rate would, we're still gonna pay that. Right. I guess I move to the, have the chairman sign it. Second. The motion and the second, any further discussion? So is it figured on what it, are we higher or lower where, than where we were paying or well, is that figured yet? This was a, um, uh, back in 95, when we first signed it, I think Clay County's obligation toward the debt of the JDC uh, construction and remodel at that time, our obligation was in the neighborhood of $7,000. I should probably look up that number, but ballpark is $7,000 a year. And um, you know, I think we paid two, two payments a year, about 3,500 a year. And um and I would easily be able to look that up and I'm sure Carrie could too, uh, but I just don't have it in front of me. And um, this would be if there was a new JDC built. So this won't obligate us to anything right now. It just basically secures our place in the compact. We had a 14 county compact in, the, in 95 and uh, uh, you know, 10 years into it or so, uh, we started having, uh, for example, Davison and Union County wanted in. And uh, those members that have been paying this debt on a fixed rate, for all these years weren't exactly open to letting them come in after the debts half paid off. And so that we started looking at how we're gonna um, add counties. And so now in this, in this kind of agreement, a county could actually come in and we would look back at their, at their five-year history and decide what their share of that debt's gonna be. And so it's, it's a way to bring people in. Um, in. In 09, we actually reached out all but pretty much all of Eastern South Dakota to see what counties would wanna participate if we, started a new compact at the end of the 95 agreement. And uh, we really, I think, ended up with 16 with Union and Davison County on top of the 14. I don't believe any of the 14 had any interest in going a different direction because it's been that successful. So at this point, we're not obligating ourselves to any debt or even any per diem. The per diem is a different contract. 
It's just uh, saying we agree based on, you know, this is the template for how we would do it when that day comes in. And we can expect um, some meetings in the near future talking about what's next. Sounds good. Thank you. And I would just add to that, that and Andy had pointed this out in a separate communication to Carrie and I, that the other benefit to this is that it keeps us as kind of stakeholders and interest in that a, a say when that planning time comes. So that's a good thing. Um, and then, you know, if you read through there, this doesn't, that's a, once the building day comes or expansion day or whatever that is, that's a whole separate agreement that we would sign if we wanted to be out under these terms or, or we say, hey, when that time comes, we don't want to proceed with that. I think we need to give 120 days notice um but beyond that it really just kind of locks us in on what what we can expect in that five-year look look back and that we still have a desire to continue with this Any discussion hearing none roll call hammond yes manning yes packard yes Mockler. yes motion motion passes can I add one last thing on that? I don't know if this is just something that maybe when it's time to actually submit the paperwork there, I noticed there are a couple of different page nine of 20s. So there's five pages of 20 and I'm assuming then there's subsequent one page each for each subsequent county. I just confirmed that we're like page nine and maybe they get that update. It's, it's, it's wonky and I'm sure they will figure it out, but it's, it's something that bothered me <laughs> so i shouldn't be signing five well i no i think you're fine i think your your signature actually goes i mean they have it listed so so ours goes page one through five with all the contract language and then your signature page is page nine of 20 but i saw it reproduced twice so oh. i was like well everyone can't sign on page nine i mean there's there's what 14 different counties on this right That's so so that, that would equate to that. I believe the reason that there's two page nines, one's for us and one's for them. Okay. And so we are the, page nine then. Yeah. And, okay. and I think what they, they ask us to return the one the okay. signature pages, the, send the two signature pages back after you approve it. So, and you're right. I think every other compact county is going to have their own page. There are different page uh, numbers. Previous agreements have to list everybody okay. on it. And you know how that had to go all the way around. Yeah. And so what's so the when you've seen that all of a sudden that went from nine? No page nine of 20 and then all of a sudden it was, it was done I'm yes like, what the heck? Where's another we're just all signatures have to <laughs> sign a bunch of copies so that all That's the fine had one and they're <laughs> not doing that was. anymore but i remember okay that. so we're we're officially page nine well i signed page five too <laughs> <laughs> Rhonda, unless wait, unless you have anything else. Um, there were two things on your Sorry. agenda. I thought it was going to be around for so Okay. Around. Okay. So I'm just bringing forward a few years ago, we did abatements on a bunch of mobile homes that had been destroyed. Well, we missed one. And so that's what I'm bringing forward today is we had a mobile home that was on Allison Street, but the mobile home has been destroyed and it's like still hanging out there on our tax collectible, but there's nothing there. So we just need to have this, this specific mobile home um, taxes abated so we can get it off the record. There has been a new home that's been put in since, and that one's fine. Everything's up to date. Taxes are paid, but we have this one hanging out there. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammonds. Yes. Manning. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want this or does Carrie have to Carrie sign? Okay. I'll oh, just leave the pile. I'll give it to her at the end. Okay. And then Rhonda, will you be around for? Yeah, okay. Rod, bridge removal funding agreements. Morning. Yeah, I swear we've done three of these for the same bridges. 
but um, thinking it was very much like another case that yeah. keeps coming around. <laughs> um, the first one that 088 170 is a bridge on over to Clay Creek, west of the bluff, just north of uh, Land the landfill. So I don't know if you want to do them all at once. Actually, you should only sign two, the 133, 170, because that one should be signed. But the 140, 012, we removed ourselves. And I think it was an error on their end that that ended up on the list. But that bridge is already gone. And the 133, 170 is also on 314 Street, mile and a half east of University. Though it goes over the river there, Vermilion River. But yeah, both of them, unless you guys change your mind about being part of this, we pay the 18.9 or whatever. Yeah. It's weird the way they have it split up, but We've had these on the system, you know, for like this going on the third year, I think. So they must be getting ready to come up for removal maybe next year or this fall. They had no response when I asked them what the date was. So do we have to, do we need to have that, uh, the one that we removed signed also? I suppose to get it off the hook. No, I'm going to talk to him. I told him not to have that on there, you know, that we already took it out and they sent it again. So I'll have to talk to, uh, I don't remember who sent this, Carrie. Do you remember? Yeah. Deanna, yeah. Okay. But yeah, the other two, I think we should continue on with. Uh, that other bridge is totally out. Um, I'm not sure if they got cleaned up yet or not. I haven't been down there for a while, but it was all cut up. They hadn't hauled it away yet. So uh, that's the one a mile east of University on, boy, what road is that? 462, maybe? The one south of that Manning feedlot there. Is that 462? 65. 65. I guess I got it right here. But that one, that one's pretty much done. So I recommend you sign them too. I'll move to have the chairman sign. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Hunter. Yes. Mockler. Yes. Motion passes. The one we didn't sign, Rod, do you want me to throw away or <laughs> I put just it back keep, it. keep well, it? Well, we can always copy it again. Yeah, you just throw it away. Yeah. Just to avoid confusion. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and that was the 012 one. Right. Yeah, that's up just mile south 46 up by in the mile east of university also. I have one other thing. Well, that's not good. No, maybe. <laughs> do you do you wish to continue with this? Bridge removal program, or you know, we talked about somebody wanting a bridge up there by Greg Wires. Um, I got a couple other bridges that need to go on here. Do you want the next time to sign them up? Is that what we want to keep doing, or do we want to try to let it out publicly in case somebody wants the structure? Personally, I think we should stay with the program we're doing. I mean, when they come in to take it out, whoever does it, they can contact the 
contractor if and if more than likely except for like Holloway's did this one and I mean that was part of their you know money making was to sell the scrap so but if if that's where you want to keep going I'm fine with it too it totally gets it out of our hands well it seems like every time we've tried to put them out for bids nobody ever nobody ever buys them and right. if they do give us the dollar they never remove it yeah yeah the only one that you know like the contractor loaded that one up at Hemmingson's you know and said out, but that's a way smaller structure so I would agree I don't think I think go the way we're going it's a lot less if somebody wants to buy it they can certainly contact the the person who's taking it out, they can make that agreement. Yeah. yeah. And it, it has seemed to be about the same time <laughs> element of trying to sell it to work with the state. So right. you're not gaining much there. Either. And then we don't have anything, you know, we don't have to hire an engineer. Yeah. It's all out of our hands and, you know, no the liability against us. Uh -huh. So, okay. I agree. Stick with the program. Okay. Sounds good to me. That's all I have. Anything for me? I do have one question on, so on the high, long highway 50 and that lateral that goes past the compound. Yep, lateral 50. That is lateral 50, yep. right? And so, and then we have, we're in charge of that for cleaning and all that, or do we have to get permission from the DOT? Uh, they usually just want notice. Okay. And as long as we're down in the ditch that far, they've never had a problem with it. They might have somebody come out just to check how they're swinging it, you know, so they're not getting close to the traffic. But no, we haven't had any trouble. And uh, I guess I haven't been, I've been by there, but never looked. And it's been dry, or the cattails getting to be, you know, Dennis sprayed those at, uh, before or after we had it cleaned, year after we had it cleaned. Well, the, the only reason I ask is because somebody wants to drain into there. Okay. Yeah. And we, they thought they were going to have to deal with the DOT, but I thought that was no, that, ours. that actually is kind of a DOT don't want anything to do with it unless we're going to be hauling the spoils out on, and loading on the road, then it gets to be a problem. But no, even the spraying, they don't have a problem with it. So I wouldn't think it would be a problem draining in there as long as they're paying into it or whatever. They're, that's what I would assume is a paid lateral too. It is, but I'm trying to figure out if those homes along there pay into it. Oh. Now that you mentioned paying into it. And, you know, Drew asked me at there at the corner of 454, they're planted that out for three new three lots houses. Yep. to the south. So that, that's good because that stays pretty dry right there, I think. But that burned up house and all the junk is. But that's not part of it. No, that is not, that's still the... Somebody else owns yeah, that. I don't know if that's what's going on with that, but nobody's cleaned it up or it looks nice. <laughs> but that spot you're talking about where Drew, where they're going to build the three new houses? Yeah. That's where they want, that's the property they want to drain into the oh, lateral. Okay. Is that further east then? It's south of south. the one that burnt. Oh, okay. Yeah. They split it up and... Uh, three lots, but Drew and I are working on, they want three separate driveways, which we already have three there. And they're so close that when it comes to pushing snow, it's such a pain, but we don't have an ordinance against it, but Drew said it's in the works. But of course we can't, they're, they, whoever planned it out agreed to only have two driveways, somebody sharing one. So that's, I agreed to that. I mean, that wasn't too much I could say to not, but. And it's getting rezoned, so it'll come in front of us at some point here. Oh, okay. But yeah, I, you know, everybody pays along there, so. 
And I guess I forgot, did, uh, has Brad been on? Because I asked him how that was, you know, the last time I was here, you asked me to ask him how he's coming on Clay Creek. Right. And I don't think I got a response. I'll have to get hold of it. I know it's been flowing and we turned the bill into, didn't we turn the bill into FEMA, Carrie, for that four miles here a while back? think so i think we had he you know he's keeping that last separate second separate after took a while but i think we submitted that already to fema the rest of it i know it's been flowing but i don't know if he's got anything wrote up for what needs to be done or anything i'll have to ask him again and maybe next meeting i'll have him get with you and get on the agenda and go into ditch board and see where they're at. I know I've had a couple of people ask what's going on with the right. beaver dams. <laughs> That's the only place you got water around is where the beavers <laughs> got it back there. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, everybody get to see the vouchers. Move to approve the vouchers. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes, motion passes. Contingency transfer, 2022-18, uh, $10 to tourism. I know it's a tiny one, but I just wanted to get that cleared up and um, can we afford it? <laughs> but the dues went up and I, I didn't get that budgeted for this year, but for next year, hopefully they don't go up again and we'll have a lot of things. So. I move to approve. <laughs> second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Roll call. Hammond. Yes. Canning. Yes. Packard. Yes. Popular. Yes. Motion passes. Assign eight hundred ninety thousand to building projects. This is for the uh, the second quarter. So um, we are using our our ARPA funds to um, be reimbursed for essential employee salaries, which leaves extra money in the general fund. So we would be designating that for building projects. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Packard. Yes. Butler. Yes, motion passes. County credit cards. Do we? So um, I think we had decided that, um, and I spoke with Baron Pratt about um, opening a county credit card account with them. And uh, he just needs to have that motion that I sent to you guys in order to get that process started. He needs to have something in the minutes for that. Do I need, I will so move. Was it for 100,000 for the entire county? Um, it was 50,000 50, for the county. Uh, so here's the, you need it read as it's print, you have it printed? Yeah, I need to put it exactly that way in the minutes in okay. order for them to proceed. Can you see it, Mike? It's down at the bottom on the agenda. Our okay. motion to authorize. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you have it, Phyllis? I get the motion. I'll motion to authorize auditor. Carrie Crum to apply and obtain a business credit card account issued by Pinnacle Bank through First Dakota National Bank with an aggregate limit to be set at $50,000 and to designate Auditor Carrie Crum as the administrator gatekeeper of the account. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Just to clarify, that is just for, it's not for the sheriff's office, it's for everybody else. So. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, roll call. Uh, Hammond. Yes. Henning. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes, motion passes. Opt out resolution discussion. Andy, do you have any numbers? Um, what I have, uh, if since we're really talking about the out of county jail boarding, this opt out, right? Um, yes. What I put in my budget request was five hundred thousand dollars, which I think is down one hundred twenty thousand dollars from last year. We had six hundred twenty requested for boarding last year uh, for twenty twenty three. I put in five hundred thousand, uh, kind of showing my math there. It's that's based on uh, average daily population of twenty uh, boarding in Union County. Last year we 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 did roughly the same population, but uh, at an eighty dollar a day rate which was Yankton County's rate, but Union County has taken almost all of our inmates. And I believe that they, um, he told, uh, Sheriff told me he's gonna keep doing that as long as he can and as long as he's around. So I thought rather than overtaxing, we should probably be a little bit um, more accurate if we can. Um, so that comes out to, I think $474,000. And I rounded up to 500 because we do house in Yankton County on occasion, uh, if there's a problem inmate or co-defendants or um, just Union County's full, it's not un unusual for us now to have one or two at any given time in Yankton County. The difference there's $20 a day that Yankton County is now 85 a day. So just to cover that $20 a day, I rounded up to 500,000. Does this cover the fuel transport no, it doesn't cover the wages of the fuel. Um, I don't have that number in front of me, but uh, you know, it's essentially the fuel is, um, you know, several hundred dollars a month, I think that we pay to transport. And, um, but that's, that's, that's in a different line item. And, and I've increased that, you know, my fuel, fuel, fuel budget, I've increased based on uh, past usage and anticipating if you could what cost of gas is going to be. So no, that doesn't include that. And, and the fuel costs actually come out of my sheriff's budget instead of the jail. Carrie, the 890,000 that we just moved, um, does that affect the percentage? No, okay. So talking to Carrie the other day, if we don't opt out at all, we can have a surplus of 22.89%. That's if nothing changes. $250,000 opt-out would get, put us to 25.7. So it depends on what percentage we want to end up with. Because we're at 31, a little over 31 right now with the way the budget looks. And that is assuming nothing changes in the budget and the non-mandated programs stay unfunded like they did last year. I must admit, I would like to bring forward that we look at something for the non-mandated. So just to put that in, I will be approaching that, bringing up for discussion, even at a low level. I think it's appropriate. Say that again. So if, if, if we don't do anything, it would be at 22. 0.89%. OK, and if we take, what, 250? 250,000. It's 25.7. I guess I wouldn't mind. I agree with, with Phyllis on this one. I think maybe if we could give some of those places some back some money, I think it'd be great because I know a lot of them are hurt pretty good right now. I know the conservation service is hurt, and I know that just, I know that the food pantry is hurt and bad. And so, I mean, these things are all, I think we could help it out. I guess I would be, I guess I would mind going for the 25. That would leave us some other money to work with. It would, but so yeah, it would put us down to 20. If, if you, because there was about $170,000 that we did in non-mandated okay. based on last year's. Okay. So if we opted out for the 250,000, that would put us right at the 23%. 23? If you if you added the hundred and seventy back in, okay. Which I don't think it'd be real bad. 
me personally. I, on, on my projections for the inmates also, I should say that I'm projecting, I'm trying to be more realistic. Uh, we kind of shot for the middle last time, figuring uh, we might have to put some Minnehaha County and we haven't. Union County has been good to us. I can't promise that they will be, they can't either, but if they continue to be good and take all of our inmates that they have, our numbers should stay down. Another thing is, is that I'm budgeting or, or anticipating the potential of you know 20 inmates per day. And even if our average population is there, we still house a certain number of uh, work release here. Um, we don't take everybody down, down there. For example, Union County actually boards an inmate here um, because they have somebody that does weekend sentences and they sit that weekend sentence here because it's within our 72 hours. So uh, we do our best to try to save every dollar we can. Um, we, I try to budget responsibly enough to where we have enough and, and, uh, and able to, to go on because if you don't plan for that and I come back in August, September and you hadn't opted out, you don't have the money, we're not gonna have enough to cover it. But uh, I, I'm optimistic that it's, that's not gonna exceed that, the 500 uh, and, and hopefully even better. But uh, I'd been asked uh, in, in our jail planning discussions to uh, come up with the difference between our actual, how many inmates we boarded uh, for the last year versus our average daily population. You know, I'm only going to have one year to look at, so I'm not going to be able to say, well, we can all, uh, you know, say that it's going to be a certain percentage of our average daily population we house out of county because that's going to fluctuate depending on each individual inmate because it's a, it's a case by case situation on who goes. And, um, but I can, I can give a number anyway, as, as terms of, cause now we've been doing this for a calendar year, not a calendar year, but a, a, a actual year. Um, and so I can actually do that for this past 12 months on how many we actually housed out of County versus how many we actually had in custody. But I don't have that number today. What is our option if we go over? Go. Supplement or what? <laughs> If we do go, yeah, if we went over next year, we'd have to supplement. Making sure there is a. Well, there'll still be 23% to yeah. draw from. Right. Which it is was more the technicalities of. Which is what? Roughly a million dollars, Carrie? Yeah. Do we have to do this today? Yes. Okay. Opt-outs are due by July 15th, so. And Andy, you've, you've already put your 500, it's in the budget. It's, it's, in, it's in my request, yeah. So I don't, think, I don't think we'll need the whole 170 because we did what, four something to the fair board? And yeah, I, I think when you go through here, the fair board got, Fair board got like eight. I remember right. Like, the fair board got half yeah. this year. So they got eighty two fifty. Yeah. Oh, they got eighty two fifty. Yeah, okay. Uh, places like and Dakota Senior Meals. Yep. And Lewis and Clark, which is another big one. Um, okay. So it's not gonna be the whole hundred and seventy no. then. No. And and the Main Street Center was getting 20,000, which was a bit high. Are they still, or, were they 20 last year? They were, yeah. no, prior years. Okay. Yeah. 20, 2021. Right. Or, yeah. We paid, we paid in 2021. We didn't pay for 2022. Okay. It was 20,000, which I feel is. Yeah, that's the senior citizen got 4,500 last year. Which is oh, rocks the, the senior, senior meals. Oh, well, that was a code yeah. senior. Okay. Yeah, the Main Street Center was getting twenty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. And how much was um, conservation getting? They were getting twenty five thousand previously. And the Arts Council was getting five, <clears throat> um, which anything between zero and five. We're trying to put air conditioning into the building, and which would add to income because you could have programs during the summer. So reduce need in the future. So if we put those people back in, because we took about over a hundred thousand out last year, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
what if we turned around and did an opt-out for 100,000? It just brought those people back to where they were at. I mean, I don't, you know, that would be, you know, it wouldn't increase anybody, but at least get you some money back. Right. You know. And, well, and do you want to go back to the levels that we were at? I'm not sure if I do because I'm not sure the conservation service needs twenty five thousand dollars. Now they might disagree with me, which I'm sure they will. <laughs> but I really, honestly, feel like that thinks is something that probably does need, you know. Uh, but but definitely the libraries, and I'll, I'll say in the arts council, is it W H over? They could all definitely use every penny that they get. Right. And, and I'm not sure what the public library, what we gave them in the past. Vermilion Public Library was 4000 Which is and pretty low for what? Mercer got 2500 I think, and Wakanda got some too, right? Yeah. I don't remember how much. So I, I guess I could even see if you restored them back to what they were, because, I mean, you know, people like them. Those libraries do need it. I like I said, I know the food pantry can use it. I know SESDAC can use it. I mean, I, I don't know about doing anything but new if they came forward. Mm -hmm. I know public transportation has talked to me, but I just if we go to one, I don't think we can add new ones, is what I'm getting at. So I think we can leave the fair board where they're at this year because they're getting the mower too. Yeah. And they didn't get completely cut out. Excuse me. They didn't get completely cut out last year for 2022. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they'll see it differently, but but as long as we can continue with the what was it, 8200 or something you yeah. said, and the mower. 8250, yeah. <clears throat> and you, you know, you were saying what senior citizens, this is for meals here, but you said that we get twenty thousand. We, we Over and above the year. meals, wasn't it? This year, no. This year, they didn't get anything. Right. But normally, it's 20000 over and above the meals. Right. Which, I guess, I wonder, I would love to see an accounting of why they need that much. Right. I agree with you. I, I think we should uh, make sure that they know when their budget items are coming up so they can come in and talk to us about each of their uh, appropriations. We we need to hear from them this year, I think. That was going to be my next question is, you know, whether I should request that they all come in or whether you start out with a certain amount and then go from there. I wasn't sure what you all wanted me to do about that because I have been getting questions from them. Well, I think the expensive ones, maybe we should have them come in. You know, 4,500 in the library, you know, the, the libraries are, right. That pay, I mean, they've already explained that that goes towards not charging any county resident mm -hmm. for their library card. Does that total 45 go to Vermilion or is some go to the Beersford Library? So 4,000 was Vermilion. Um, you know what, I can look this up. It seemed to me we were giving something to the Beersford. I think it's 2,500. We um, in Wakanda, too, right? I believe so. In Wakanda, too. Let's see. I can look that. We don't go to Irene. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. So let's see. Beersford was getting 1,500. Wakanda was getting 2,500. Oh, okay. Can, can you actually put out what we used to give them all to every every organization? Yep, so we can see I can send that to you right now. Yeah, that'd be great. Because then we have it to look through before we they come in to see us. And I know the Arts Council is getting five. I know what the request would be is five or six. That's the, we have it in the account, 6,000 towards the air conditioning. That would be a match to that and get it done. So do we opt out for 125 just to kind of be in a ballpark? I mean, we don't have to spend it. Mm -hmm. And that'll get us 
20, I don't know, somewhere between 23 and 24% ending. And does that, what type of percent um, wage increase did you have in there, Carrie? Do you remember? 12.6. Okay. We can always cut that. <laughs> now I feel those eyes. <laughs> the only one that didn't look our way was. She sent an email, email I'm sure. <laughs> But there, was a few, yeah. but there was a few darts in there. I, see that. <laughs> I, I think for each of those unmandated that we had the list for last year, I think we should at least send them a request for a written request that would be annotated, uh, justifying their expenses or their request, not their expenses, but their request, so that we have a better uh, means of, of deciding how to allocate those funds. You want that sent to every every one, Dick? Is that right? I think it should go to every one of them, yeah. Okay. You know, it's, it's not that big of a deal to send out uh, almost a form letter asking for an uh, annotated request uh, that asking uh, with a justification for what they're uh, asking their funds for. I know we'll get a uh, 100 pages back from Daniel at the Vermilion Library. <laughs> okay, I'll, re I'll read through it. <laughs> Tell him we've got it already. <laughs> Lexi, and did you have- For what it's worth, he was one that contacted me and asked if you all were considering it this year or not and what he needed to send in, so. And the Arts Council hasn't asked because of him here. <laughs> Do you need to identify what you're opting out for? And if so, like when you do the opt out, and I don't, I probably should know the answer to this, uh, but I just assumed we would be discussing opting out for purposes of inmates in jail. And so I guess my inquiry is, particularly when you're talking about the funds that you've just discussed and allocation of various things, that's my inquiry is, do you need to identify what you're opting out for? We do, yes. So that would be my because if it ever got referred, they need to know what. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. So that makes it more difficult because we've already stated that uh, we have the funds to make the budget. We have the funds to cover the five hundred thousand. We're taking yeah. it down to what twenty two percent. Twenty two point eight seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm glad you did. Uh, okay. The first sentence of the resolution is the governing board of Clay County Commissioners do state that the above said board is unable to operate under the tax limitation measure currently in statute. So as long as you've been figuring it out, if we don't do anything, we will be at. If we don't opt out for anything, 22.87. Okay. So if we, instead of the $100,000 that the, we took away from these other places, and we give them like 50,000, what would that, that probably only change it like 1%, right? I don't even think it would change it at 1%. It'd be close. Does that include the employee raises? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know we discussed it before, but I just got to poke in and say I've had some emails lately from other counties and they're in the same boat we are and they're raising. So some are up to 16%. Some have already given raises this year. Some are already giving raises effective July 1st. Yeah. We are one of the lowest in We really are. <laughs> I guess I guess I would go that we don't opt out at all. I can say that. I don't know how we can. I don't see how we can either. I mean, and I guess if these people bring in their what they they want and we can think we can do it, then we do it. Otherwise, nope. Because 
we went into this with the idea was for boarding, period. That's why we opted out last year. You're absolutely right. And so I don't think we can go back on that and say, you know, I mean, I'd like to give the, the Arts Council, uh -huh. I'd like to give everybody some money, but I just don't think we can do that. I can say that pretty easy here too, because I'm not gonna be on the board next year, but. <laughs> well, I mean, but, when the resolution says we're unable to operate, yeah, we're able to operate. Right, exactly. And there is a little funding. I mean, we do have a little bit of a cushion. It's not 12%, which right. is good. Right. Nope. The other question, because is there any room in the ARPA funds or whatever it's called for the non-mandated? Because all the information I've received from the feds is there should be. We can. Then you get into a situation where you have a sub grantee and that the county would be responsible for doing all the grant okay. audits okay. for that organization. So it that complicates things. I, yep. that's, that helps yep. answer that one. Yeah. And the reason we've been using it for salaries and wages for essential employees mm -hmm. is that then the county also doesn't have all the extra reporting requirements that we would have. So the other point on that simplest route just to realize for future that yes we are covering our ex operating expenses through alternative means and that will not happen a year from now in other words well, you're setting we're setting ourselves up for what what we're doing is using the the extra general fund dollars that we will yeah. have due to the, the ARPA expenses reimbursing us for our payroll. Um, we've been putting it towards building projects. So getting those extra upgrades done to the, the HVAC system and the cabling and stuff like that. So going forward, we just won't have that $3 million to put towards you know large projects. We'll have to start budgeting accordingly for things. For personnel. So it's not really, it's not really covering like normal expenses. We've just been able to do bigger projects that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to do in this building. Which, okay, but those will, we will not have the funds to do projects after, you know, bigger projects after, because all of the, what's coming out of our pool will be. So just to keep that in mind also. Yeah. Next year's budget will look quite different. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Oh, I'm pretty sure we'll be opting out next year. That's where it. it the other thing that comes to mind is the minute we don't opt out, it's saying we don't need it. We don't need the new cent law enforcement center. I don't know how that can be explained to the public. Well, I don't think that changed because we're still spending that money. Yeah, we're still spending the money. But that's what we need to make sure is understood. Right, right. Because he's still the travel, and he still put five hundred thousand dollars in that he would have never put in that. Correct. Mm -hmm. So that would have never been there. So he just got a better feel for what he needed this year than we did last year. Partly because we finished out the year before, plus. That was why we took the 725, correct? Right? Yeah, we took the 725 because <laughs> June of 2020, we started housing prisoners outside. We were That's trying true. to get yeah. recoup some of that that we spent that was right. above and beyond, plus last year. And you know, having them out of the jail allowed us to, and especially with the funding available, to fix problems in the jail so it's functioning and and we're able to keep some people here, but. So yeah, we we actually in, are are in a pretty good place, um, and we we budgeted for more because we weren't really sure that Union County could take them all. I'm kind of surprised that they have been. I know that day will end; they will fill back up. But our 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 population's just doing. It doesn't. We have monthly spikes up and down, but for the most part, we've seen an average trend since 2008 of about 0.75 inmates per day 
each year increasing on our to our average daily population. And I think it's still following that. So it's that's why I'm, I'm just holding at the 20 number rather than say, well, it's 24, 21. Because you know, we've had some months where we've averaged 24 inmates, but we didn't house all of those out of county. So I feel pretty comfortable with this number. But you also got to realize that somewhere along the line, all these places, the ancients at 85, well, Union County's at 65. Well, who's saying that Union County sits next year? You know, we're going to go to 75 and the yeah. Union County goes to 95. I, I'm just using $10. I believe I mean, that they will. Uh, <coughs> Minnehaha County is going up from 97 and change to $106 um, first of the year. And uh, we, we have a housing contract with them, even though they haven't housed for us, but they'll be sending us that. I think it's going to be $106 and change. They're, they're down to the penny. Yankton County just increases increased from 80 to 85 earlier this year. Union County doesn't have a plan right now. He knows that there will come a point they will. I don't know if we're going to see it in January or not. They haven't increased for years. Most counties don't do it annually. They do it every several years. That's the same as us. And so I expect a bump in Union County at some point. So next year, we won't have the 500000 We'll be opting out next year. We just happen to have the money this year. So, I mean, we could opt out this year for two hundred and fifty. Not to spend the money, but just so we don't opt out for five hundred thousand next year, we could do two hundred fifty every year. I feel that may be wiser. Yeah. But we we can't spend that money on. I mean, that's that's going to be to help pay for housing inmates come next year. So we're not so we're not doing the full tilt and of five hundred thousand next year. Because even if our project succeeds, we will be boarding until it's finished. Right. No, I understand what you're saying there, but we got to make, make sure that we don't hear about that none of that money actually stay, stays there, not go into special right. interest. Groups. Right. Yeah, it can't go. Absolutely know. right. That'd be the only, I mean, I don't know how anybody would look at it, but I mean, that's. I'm a little scared that people are going to say, well, you opted for 250000 Why? You, you said you had the 500000 to deal with. This year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because of the ARPA funds, right. which aren't going to be there next year. Right. right. I'm comfortable with 100 or 150, somewhere in there. Well, what about the 250? Just the half of, because if it's, if we did 250 this year and 250 next year, that covers, uh, that's enough for 2024. Presuming well, our numbers don't change in Union County. Yes. Yeah, still hopefully. <laughs> That's if they don't change. Now, the yeah. first, what, first quarter, you're averaging about 30 inmates? Yeah. For the first quarter, our average was uh, 25. 25, okay. A decimal after that. But um, but you're figuring 20 right now. Yeah, we're, because then we dropped. Yeah. Uh, after the first quarter, we dropped again. Uh, now we're running in the, in the high teens. Um, so I don't think our numbers are going to drive a need for more funding. I think what would require us to really significantly run short will be Union County becoming full or having an issue there that they can't take us. Yankton County couldn't take all of us right now anyway. They tend to be full, but they could probably take quite a few. If we went to Minnehaha County at $106 a day, I don't think they would take all of our inmates without a contract for X number of beds, a set number that we're going to pay whether we use them or not because that's how they're going with Lincoln County. That could be very expensive. At least we'd have a known number, but um, that could be expensive. If we were to opt out for whatever number, Carrie, are we able to put that in a separate line items or account? We can, we can assign money that, so that it is kept separate. That it can only be used for jail, yeah. housing like slash transportation. Probably... I like that. I you know, too. for purposes of keeping it easy, then we could probably on assign quarterly whatever we spent that last quarter on jail boarding. And that would that would keep it separate that way. I think the 250,000 hopped out sounds like it's it's smart because it can keep our give us a little contingency, a little little bump and if we did term that for uh, housing prisoners and transportation uh, that that gives us a little more authority to use that that th those monies on transportation because that means 
uh, the cost of the the uh, labor as well as uh, the drivers of the of the things as well as as the direct costs of keeping the those vans moving and uh, I think keeping it level as uh, uh, Phyllis had suggested is is a smart move uh, it it just makes sense to me that uh, cutting as far as we can we ended up with uh, other expenses where we'd have to transfer money uh, from one one place to another run through our reserves we could be in a world of hurt plus it actually still you know last year was 725 so they're if you're only 250, you're at your taxes on that part of the rash is going to be down. It'll be like a third almost mm -hmm. of whatever we were paying last year. Right? Okay, that's what I that, that really helps. Be, and, yeah. and the reason for that is we didn't have a, uh, as Andy pointed out, we didn't have a, a, a history to work from. We didn't have, uh, 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 we didn't really know where we're going. And also, we had to be thinking in terms of our losses for the that year, year last year, that six months that we were, were kind of in arrears uh, without the benefit of the opt-out. So we were really paying for a year and a half at that point. And it's still a moving target. We still have no idea exactly where it's gonna be. So yeah, it's still before budget time down at Union County, the boys down there might just uh, tell Dan that, uh, hey, uh, you need to be you need to, need to be charging more for this jail because we're uh, that's that's a source of income for us, and uh, might be that Dan isn't the last word on that. That's true. The one thing Dan did tell me he says, as long as I'm sheriff, I'll take your inmates. He can't promise beyond that, and right. and also I don't expect him to keep that promise either because if he gets full of our of his own inmates, he can't take ours. They were going to add on to their jail, and that ended up. Uh, failing so they won't be so they could find themselves full soon uh, I don't think they will kick out all of our inmates um, that, that day could come but I, I I just find I think we'll be just driving more directions which drives up expenses yep I do agree with Dick on bringing in the travel that is a very real expense especially with the cost of fuel now well, and, and personnel and not just fuel but the van someday will have to be replaced also true well, how many miles are we putting on that a year now at this point uh, andy i don't have that number in my head <laughs> uh, i would guess in the neighborhood of fifty thousand miles a year yeah we we, it, we put um We've averaged roughly 30,000 miles per patrol car for routine patrol. Uh, that van is just driving to all highway. Um, I imagine it's a little bit more. And it wasn't new when we bought it. No, it's 2015. Yeah, my guess is we'll be at a quarter of a million miles in no time with that. Yeah, because what did we buy it with? Do you remember? How many miles? Yeah. I think, wasn't it in the neighborhood of 60,000 or something like that? That's it, my recollection, yeah. I've got this information on my desk, but and I can tell you the miles and average and all of that, but I don't have it in my head. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, when we did it, I didn't dream 50,000 miles a year. No. <laughs> Thank you. We no, we were talking not. conferences. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was around, it was right at 60 because I had uh, made the comment in that meeting that uh, uh, it used to be that the feds would would uh, shop, start shopping uh, or start looking for replacements for their vehicles in the federal fleet and they would re replace them at between 60 and 80. So this fell right in with that. Anybody got a comfortable number? I will make a motion that we opt out for the 250,000. For, for oh. Jail transport for DM and personnel movement. It'll be put in a so separate. Then, Travis, I, um, I think you have the resolution. We just need to fill in the blanks on that. We also need to specify the number of years. So if you're just going to do it for one year, 
we just specify one year in there. I think we should just do one year. I one mean, because it might change next year. So we've had that much information within one year. We've had that much more. Yeah. If you if you'd have done two or three years last year, you'd be, we'd be sitting on way too much money. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with one year. Payable in the calendar 2023, correct? Yeah, uh, 2024. Because we're opting out for 23. Wait, no, 20. Yes, 23. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> 23. Yeah. Yeah, because right. it's just the one year. Okay. Yep. Okay, so we've got an opt out for $250,000 for one year. Did I get a second on that? Yeah. Did Dick second it? Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Henning. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes, motion passes. We all have to sign this. So Dick, if you ever get a chance to get down here. Okay. I need to do that this week. I need to do that this week, don't I Carrie? Yeah, if you could, um, I've got to get it off to the state here. Oh, technically, it was passed today, but our deadline is the 15th for opting out. So, okay, I'll get there. I feel a good discussion on that. Thank you. Oh, um, Andy, do you mind if we go into executive session? Do you mind stepping out for a few minutes? Right, but I'm just trying to get them back to work. <laughs> well, I don't care. You can be part of it, or are you staying, Sam? Um, Lexi only has one case upstairs. I think she's going to come back out, but she's fine with that. I mean, if we want, we can do the. We can discuss the jail right now. <laughs> and then I'm going to take lunch. Yeah. <laughs> and my coffee break. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to talk about the, the jail, the, the new planned facility. Um, I keep, you know, everybody keeps talking about putting it on the fall ballot. I, how do we, how are we going to be able to do that? if we're waiting to see what the regional jail study does. At, and, and then our, also our options expires the 1st of September. And I haven't heard anything from Larry yet on that. He was gonna extend it, but nothing's happened yet. How do we move forward with that? Because I, I don't wanna waste the, the committee's time that you, know, you guys are having meetings, hoping that it's gonna be on the fall ballot. I think is everybody's understanding on that committee, correct? Yeah, I think the, the intention is that it's, we're pursuing it for the fall ballot. Um, I was just reviewing uh, during our most recent meeting, there was discussion of the extending the um, purchase option. And um, he did say, uh, well, this is this is coming from Dakota Realty, uh, Glenn Erickson. Chances are very good. We can get a short extension of three to six months. So I, I don't think we're, we're bound to September. For the for the land, okay. Um, in terms of the regional jail discussion, I I don't believe we're going to see uh, a bunch of money coming our way. the The thing is, is that if it does, that's all fine. You know, I don't think that. Um, I think that would just help us with you know our cost because I think that we're pursuing a facility here anyway, and so um, in this county, I mean. So it would just be a matter of uh, that we pursue this project as uh, having potential to be a regional jail. And, and, um, and, you know, we've already discussed with Turner and Lincoln counties about it. We're waiting to hear back from their commissions. Their sheriffs were tasked with talking to their commissions. And I, I'm of the understanding that Lincoln County won't be interested in, in building a jail together with us. Turner County, uh, in talking with the sheriff, his thought was be going forward that they wouldn't participate in, uh, you know, the debt, but would house their inmates here if we had space. 
So that's why I, I, in our resolution that you passed here in recent weeks, that I'd ask for the language to not be a regional jail, but a regionally operated jail, because I don't know what everybody believes a regional jail to be. I can tell you every county in South Dakota operates as a, as a regional jail, they, because the j counties that just don't need jails don't have jails. And there's a lot of them and they just don't need them, just like we don't need a juvenile detention center in Clay County. It just wouldn't make any sense. And there's a lot of counties in South Dakota that wouldn't make any sense to have a jail. So they board with, with their neighbor counties. So uh, a compact situation like we have for JDC, I think is what some legislators believe a regional jail is. I don't think that's gonna happen in Southeast South Dakota. We're one of only a few counties contiguous down here that don't have jails, or we have a jail, but it's, it's not in full operation. Um, so these other counties already have a jail and they have no reason to become a compact county and have us pay their debt. They already have it. Um, Turner County isn't gonna build one anytime soon. I don't believe, although they, they, they see that on the horizon as Falls Grows. That's another reason they're probably not as likely to join us in, in, a, in a debt obligation to build one when they can house with us. So I think that as long as we continue our project with the idea that it would be operated and, and doors open to, to other counties, to satisfy that. So counties that don't need jails aren't building jails. Now there'd be some counties that might say, well, Clay County doesn't need one. You know, if, if our inmates, if we don't have a jail, we're gonna house our inmates elsewhere, you know, uh, ongoing in, into the future. And uh, we already know what the cost of that is. Now, some might say, well, it's cheaper than, than building, but in, in uh, over the course of the bond and then beyond it costs more. So I, I think that we want to continue to pursue it. And, um, but I really don't expect to see a lot of funding coming from the state. I'm not saying it won't. What, what I have proposed, and um, this is more in conversation and not in any written form to anybody in particular, uh, other than the Argus leader, and um, was that I think that we need to have, ideally, if the state wants to partner, um, that they would provide funding to jails to and expand or build because Yankton County recently expanded their jail. Now they're kind of not exactly supportive. Their state legislators aren't supportive of this idea because they say, hey, we taxed ourselves and we built our own jail and now the state's suddenly gonna give money to other jails. But I think if the, if the opportunity was there for them to expand if necessary, create additional space for housing for state inmates to be housed in county jails toward the end of their sentences and uh, integrate back into their home communities rather than being kicked out you know, in Sioux Falls. Um, I think that that would be the kind of partnership we might see and certainly with other counties as well. So I think state money might come for that purpose. I'd like to think anyway. So I don't know if we benefit by, by putting it off another year because if we put it off to, well, we're not in a regular election year next year anyway, so it's gonna be a special election if we, if we kick it into uh, 2023 and then um, costs go up. You know, I don't expect it to be cheaper another year down the road. And, and if there is state money coming our way, I, I think that only benefits us if we have a project. So if we wanna wait and not have a project until we find out if there's an offer of money if we do, you know, we could sure do that, but I just think it's gonna cost us more in, in the waiting. We already know what it costs to wait six months. But Question, or where are we on the design development? Well, the design's been established now since, you know, last spring. Um, right now, the only, uh, the only thing, the reason it was put off from June to, to November was to allow us to educate. Right. And there's a committee that's been meeting, uh, uh, Mike's been attending, Betty's been attending, and, um, and, and several others, uh, people beyond those that were in the, in the study committee. And this is a group that's intended to actually advocate for the project. And you know, Which more than just next, answer questions. My but next question is how much is going out to the public? I feel strongly that it needs to be out into, is there a possibility of a Facebook page? Yes. Um, yeah. The committee, there will be a public meeting 
on uh, at the Kozak Room and Library on July 19th. Uh, the idea there is to just say, here, here's where we are so far, get what an idea of who supports us, who opposes us and why, and then, and then try to answer those questions. Then we'll where, have me. Where? At the library. I know, no, I mean, beyond the library, I don't feel it's getting to the public. And yeah. That's and where I'm recommending that there be, if at all possible, something on the Facebook page on the VCDC Monday Messenger. Yeah. Almost a weekly paragraph of why. And that's been discussed uh, as well. The intention is not so much Facebook, but to have an actual website and then have a Facebook page that puts the information, directs people to the website. What we don't want to have is all of this bitter, um, unproductive comments back and forth like we see on Facebook. Um, so if, if the Facebook just directs people to, to the website where we have the, the, um, the why and uh, the numbers and let people do it, I, I'd like to see a, a calculator for people to enter their property values and tell them what their costs would be, things like that. And that's all being discussed. Of course, that's going to cost money. And so uh, people, somebody's gonna have to put up money and, and I think some of the people in the group are ready to write checks themselves because they believe in the project. So, um, but that's, that's in the works right now. And uh, momentum's starting to build up. It, it, was, it was put off um, till after the June election. And so now it's just starting up again. Okay, I'm just saying, I think right. it needs to be done now mm -hmm. and weekly just a little bit each week even mm -hmm. if it's like a paragraph or two that says well, if where we're at what we need what is happening you know a snippet to just get it in a positive vein and have it in the newspaper or you know there is that one section in the plain talk or broadcaster where it's the library and mm -hmm. other this should be able to go in there for almost no or no cost and then longer articles once in a while, but just so it's it gets on people's minds that it is a needed. I think it's been we've lost time. We lost momentum when we took it off the June ballot because we didn't think there'd be time. But it uh, um, it's it's building up again. And um, the the I think the real key we need to have is that that website, and that's going to cost us some money. But then we can always direct people to that. Uh, you mentioned Monday Messenger. We're going to have find out more at and give them a website. We don't want that to be the county website, but you mentioned legally, and that's why this group's uh, formed. This is not the group that was appointed by the county commission. Right. This is not an extension of the county commission. We can close our doors. It's a group of people that support this project, and um, that group can spend money, and that group can um, advertise, and we don't have to worry about the public meeting part of it or the public funds involved. So um, I'm optimistic that the word's going to start getting out it, and, um, and, and get the, what we want to know is what questions people are going to ask. And, um, and then uh, if they're just going to keep asking the same questions, getting the same answers, and then ask the same question at the next meeting, which is what we saw last time. It's the same people come and ask the same question, even though they received the answer. Um, well, we know how that ends. Carrie, what, uh, when do we have to have this on the ballot? or? this ballot initiative written? Um, I knew you were gonna ask me that. I wanna say it is August 3rd. Okay, but sometime early August. Yes. Okay. And so this group is right now, uh, Steve Waller is is reluctantly chairing. And, um, but he says that we need to be at this point a political action committee because we can't be a ballot committee because there isn't a ballot issue established yet. So it wouldn't be able to be a ballot committee until after you set the, set the language but so anyway at this i think that he probably talked to carrie about this or secretary of state about being what kind of group this is but he wants to form it and give it a name and so it can raise money and spend money i strongly feel we need if at all possible to have it on the ballot in november and but again i think we need it out there asap yeah. well i'm and, hoping that by the the meeting that we have on the 19th will have a lot more information afterwards to move on. That's what I'm hoping. And does, can your, does your committee have the people willing to write the stuff and get it out there? That's, I guess, where I've been. I, think I know we haven't gone to the committee because of right, many exactly. reasons, but 
But I'd be more than happy if you would help us with the writing if you want to. I don't think anybody would object to that. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a, there is my a Google Docs. I don't use it. Uh, Betty put that together. Everybody's putting information on that. Uh, Steve's got a, a very informative PowerPoint ready to go, and that would be posted online when we got a website. And then he's going to present that on the 19th. It's got a lot of these questions, a lot of answers, a lot of information on there. And um, he's got uh, he's got uh, like Darla. I think it's pretty good with uh, with uh, the computer, and the websites and stuff like that. We've got a few people that you know that, that are pretty good with that. Kind of Wendy stuff. Peterson is going to manage the <coughs> group's Facebook page. It's going to establish it and manage it. Uh, my understanding is she's got approval at work to monitor it at work, <laughs> and so okay. um, it, so that that's all in the works. I mean, we got the basis right now, I would say. We just need to make the next step. The kickoff is the 19th right, of exactly. really starting this this public um, public effort is the 19th. And I and I sure hope you folks come it's next week. How many people are in the com or attend the committee? It varies. Uh, the, we like board members, I'll tell you that. <laughs> when, we, when we decided just give everybody a pause for the June election, I think it dropped. Uh, it was pretty big then. We thought it would be bigger, but what did we have the other night? About eight? Yeah. You know, part of my, the room bothers me. I have. Oh, yeah. I, that's why I don't attend physically. Right. I'm, yeah, self protective. <laughs> no, Can I, you zoom in? What? Are, are they, we haven't been doing that. No. Okay. I was wondering if you could zoom in, but yeah, no, that hasn't been an option. And it's been in the Kozak room, which is in between, but depending on how many people are there, right. it's just a little too close for my comfort. Well, I, I, you know, if we can get you some information because your skills as a writer are good. So, I mean, I, we could use that. Uh, didn't, uh, did Steve, didn't his PowerPoint go to all of you? I haven't. Right now, I'll admit I'm. Oh, you did. I, I thought I, all the. I thought I got it. Okay. I am the director of the Arts Council, and this week and next week are Messy Hand Summer Camp. So I've been a little swamped along with my one-person show in Minnesota. I haven't. Uh, I haven't been totally yeah. diligent <laughs> on my county duties. When you catch up on that, you, you should see a lot of information on Steve's email if you want to review yeah. that. He's done a really nice job. Really nice job. And he's wide open for suggestion. Yes. Yeah, Steve's done a great job. And uh, yeah, I, I've been getting those. I wasn't able to attend that last meeting, but uh, with any luck at all, I, I, I do think that it's, uh, uh, he's, he's leading a good charge here. We're, we're hoping to find out what concerns we need to address after July 19th, you know, because it won't be the courthouse or maybe, maybe we'll find that the concern we need to address is reminding people that this doesn't involve a courthouse and, um, or, or is it too, well, you know, yeah, it's very expensive. <laughs> so, so then we might be talking about the cost of building versus the cost of not building. Uh, we just need to know what, uh, what argument we need to be making because we could spend a lot of time agreeing with each other, but we got to find out who doesn't agree with us and then tell them, you know, help educate them. Mm -hmm. So, Carrie, how do we advertise that there might be a quorum, but no decisions will be made? We'll just have to post it. Okay. So, if we can do that. Yep. So, what was that again? In case, you know, if there's three of us there or more, we, we kind of need to post that this, there could be a quorum at this, but that no decisions will be made just to cover. Mm -hmm cover our basis so people aren't going well they they were at a closed meeting and yeah you know, yeah and i thought and i i hadn't checked to see if we had posted that last one so uh i was i was going to end up needing to stay away anyway do you record the meetings at all this won't be no because it's a private it's a private meeting private no group. i know i didn't mean for zoom just record the meeting you're, uh, which, like minutes, you mean? And I could listen. <laughs> oh, I follow what you're saying. Yeah, more like, well, our arts council actually records our board meetings. And it's not for Zoom or anything else. It's just for 
trying to think how to do that. I mean, even if we just had some sort of a tape recorder for you to listen on, but how do you keep it? Because you know that somebody over there will be talking and they'll Where be answered from somebody over it. there. Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, I know Steve, one of the reasons he likes Kozak rooms because of the technology available there. So he might be planning to have it available on Zoom. I, I don't know. Though. It's just a thought. <laughs> well, I've been in meetings that have uh, been, well, that have been transmitted out uh, on Zoom, I think it is. But that makes it a public meeting, so, right? Not necessarily. It's an open to the public meeting. It. Yeah, it's open, I guess, if you want to. If they want to zoom, yeah. But if they're disruptive, you don't have to. You can just cut them off. It's not a. It's not a political or government meeting. No, we're a citizen group. We're all by ourselves. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. it's not. We're nobody there. Is you know, we're just there because we want to. We have all the same ideas. We want to see something done. Okay. Carry on. So we. <laughs> We probably need to look at the language next meeting then for the ballot. <clears throat> so you have till August 3rd to decide. But that, you know, I know. If you find out something different, <laughs> if the summer away. study starts pointing a direction that you think is out, it's proper to wait, then you can wait. You know, you don't have to put it on November ballot till August, right? Yeah, August 3rd, but that's yeah. only two meetings away. That's true. <laughs> in, my you, mind, but... in my mind, it's still early summer. So. Uh, yeah. That's okay. after the fourth. Summer's over. Gotcha. Well, <laughs> so we do have some work to do uh, before August 3rd to, to nail the contractor down on a new price because you need a dollar amount, right? And, and, uh, that's kind of where I was at. At this point, we're operating the with the previous price, but with the escalation they're talking about, I'm sure that that's not going to be the number. So I'll, I'll shoot an email out and give them that deadline and or the prior to, okay. to give us a number. I think maybe uh, should we text Steve and just see if there is a possibility of doing something with the Zoom up there? At the... Yeah. I, I owe him an email this morning. Which is almost gone. You owe him one? Yeah. Okay. He asked me for some numbers yesterday and it, yesterday didn't was not the day for me to sit and come up with numbers, but I'll, I'll work on getting those for him. I told him I'd work on that today. Um, he's trying to put the data into his presentation and um, so he's asking for data a lot so I'll get him some today and I'll, I'll mention that okay. any other questions sounds good thanks Andy now we can do executive session for legal matters I'll take a motion take um... <laughs> okay are you going to be in the office? Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion to go into executive session for legal matters. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes. We're in executive session. Entertain a motion to come out of executive session. Uh, second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Uh, Packard. <laughs> yes. Mockler. Yes. We're in regular session. Does anybody have anything else? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, guys.